So looking at a plastic model of a right upper limb, and this time we've got an anterior view, we're looking here at part of pectoralis major. So we can see the clavicle up here articulating with the acromion. Here's our pectoralis major. Part of it, of course, has been cut away, but this part is the part attaching to the clavicle here. So that's still pectoralis major. If we just move lateral to that, and we're now looking at a more lateral point of view, we can see the deltoid. So you can see it attaching here to the clavicle, the acromion, and then the spine of the scapula. So that is all deltoid. Then if we look superior uh, to those structures, so again, spine, acromion, and, and clavicle here, we can see part of the trapezius. So again, trapezius has been cut so that we can see structures underneath it, but that's part of the trapezius we can see there, which means that sitting just under it there, deep to it, would be supraspinatus. So this is the spine of the scapula here. So sitting in the supraspinous fossa here is supraspinatus. Now if we remove the deltoid, that means that then inferior to the spine, now we're looking at a posterior point of view. So here's the spine, here we've got infraspinatus. And then this smaller part here, teres minor. Now there's a fairly clear line on the model dividing those two. Sometimes on the specimens, they, they're difficult to tell apart, particularly if the deltoid is still in place and it's covering up a fair amount of those muscle fibres. But uh, So to, to pin them, I, I like you to be able to clearly tell. So infraspinatus, teres minor, and then inferior to that, but larger, teres major. Then if we have a look at it from an anterior point of view, here in the subscapular fossa, we can see subscapularis. Now this is the medial border of the scapula here. So attaching here, post, more posteriorly, would be the rhomboids, heading over to, a, to a, attach with the vertebrae. But also, serratus anterior would be attaching here, but the fibres of serratus anterior come this way. They're sitting on the subscapularis, and then they curve around the rib cage this way. So they would actually be where my hand and, and fingers are there. That would be where serratus anterior would run. Now sometimes on the specimens, there's a little bit of serratus anterior left sitting here on subscapularis. So make sure you look for that. It can be quite confusing. If you think you're looking at subscapularis, but you're not, and then you fold something out of the way and realise, oh, hang on, that's actually something different. So it'll be, if it's there, it'll be serratus anterior. Now then inferior to the subscapularis, which is here, we can see teres major. So teres major we can see from an anterior point of view as well. It's quite a large muscle. And this tendon here is latissimus dorsi. So that would have been a, a very large muscle down here on the torso, but it tapers to a relatively small tendon. It's still a fair size, but compared to the size of the muscle belly, quite small. So that's latissimus dorsi there, coming up to attach to the humerus. Now the one we can't see, but it would be attaching here to the coracoid process, is pectoralis minor. Uh, and also we don't have a subclavius here under the clavicle either. So there's a couple there that we can't spot. Um, some of the other ones that we can see though, if we move on to muscles of the arm, attaching to the coracoid process, we can see the small coracobrachialis. Now on this model, it's a fair size. Sometimes on the specimens, it's quite small and hard to spot because it, it blends proximally here with this part of biceps brachii, the more medial part. So these, these tendons here will tend to blend with each other where they attach to the coracoid process. So this is coracobrachialis. This is biceps brachii. You don't need to differentiate between the heads. If, if any part of this is pinned, you just write biceps brachii. But you can see there's one tendon coming to the coracoid process and more laterally, another tendon coming up here between the greater and lesser tubicles. But they're both part of the biceps brachii. Now, um, deep to the biceps brachii, and it's a bit tricky to see it on this medial point of view, but deep to the biceps brachii, on the distal end, we have brachialis. So we can see parts of it here, here, and here. That's brachialis, it's sitting 
biceps brachii is actually sitting on it. Uh, but from the good news is from a lateral point of view now, this is brachialis here. So here we've got biceps brachii, here's brachialis, very easy to spot from a lateral point of view. Now, so those were the three anterior and medial arm um, muscles. Now we can see from a lateral point of view, triceps brachii. We can also see it from a posterior point of view where it takes up pretty much all the, the arm here. So this is all triceps brachii. Note that part of it attaches to the scapula. All parts attach, all three heads attach to the olecranon. And from a medial point of view, it's also very clearly visible here. So the only way we can't see it is if we have a directly anterior view. So that's coracobrachialis, biceps brachii, brachialis, and then triceps brachii. And we'll just I'll have a little pause there while I get ready to do the forearm. It's probably worth having sorry, separate videos for the 